Wonderful. Uh, let me read a couple of uh, things that I just thought it's funny. So this Methodist couple, on one fine evening, they were sitting on their porch, old Methodist couple. They are drinking a glass of wine. We call it grape juice here in India. And <laughs> so <laughs> suddenly uh, this wife, old lady, she said, I love you. So this guy, old man, looked at it and says, Honey, are you talking or the wine talking? And she said, Honey, I'm talking to the wine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> What is the best example of once in a lifetime opportunity? A mosquito sitting on your mother-in-law's face. <laughs> That's not as funny as it sounds. Okay. Let me see. Atheism is a non-profit organization. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. The future, the present, and the past walked into your bar, things got a little tense. Anyway, these are supposed to be jokes, you should be laughing. It's like, you guys, <laughs> I have no clue what happened to you. Lift up your Bible, say this after me, Lord Jesus, influence me this morning. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will put your words in my mouth and it's gonna be impossible to just teach share your word out of my own flesh nothing of the flesh can produce anything eternal and we know that and none of us have come here to hear a voice of a man which would be a disappointing thing to do on sunday but lord we are here to hear your voice so holy spirit i pray that you will take control and you will lead and you will speak and as we heard last week that you will build your church in and through our lives in jesus name amen so we are actually continuing uh, what we started last week uh, about vision uh, the last week title goes like this that jesus never said go to church and it is a kind of a controversial topic because we are taught on sunday means you have to go to church we are taught how to behave on sundays and uh, these, we talked about this. We talked about the eight pillars of the church and how the eight pillars were essential in the early church and how they functioned. And it was never an event, it was more a lifestyle. And we talked about in depth about worship, word, communi communion, prayer, fasting, giving, evangelism, and discipleship. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm believing that I hope are you, you are also reading the book of acts because that would help us to be on the same track otherwise it will be like i'll be saying it'll go over your head or it'll be like a little weird like is this true or is it something charles is making it up if you keep reading the book of acts you will find uh, the reality of what we are discussing here as as i was meditating on the book of acts for these years and one of the thing i realized all these eight pillars stand on the soil which is the next slide we talked about it and um, it's the soil of um, supernatural and keep going persecution and joy you know and those are the mixture of the soil the soil is the people who are always in constant expectation that that something supernatural going to happen today we hardly talk about that we we kind of categorize it oh this church is a weirdo church they kind of into you know holy rollers and frozen popsicles we kind of categorize them and we kind of say to some people i'm more a word-based church i'm more a spirit-led church but i don't think that in the kingdom of god there is a difference between a word-based church and a spirit-led church I mean, God, the spirit in you doesn't make you a lunatic. It empowers you to become like Jesus. Amen? Can you say that to someone? This Holy Spirit in you doesn't make you a lunatic. 
it empowers you to be like Jesus. So we, we talked about that, how the supernatural lifestyle. And then we also talked about persecution. Persecution is something the early church lived with. It's not something they evaded. They never prayed against. Whenever persecution comes, and I was talking to this pastor who is in Hong Kong, and he is, happens to be an American, but he lives in Hong Kong for 55 years. He speaks fluent Cantonese. And uh, he, I came to know through, through another friend, and I, I shared with you my testimony of smuggling Bibles into mainland China. And I remember uh, I asked them, some of the mainland Chinese believers, how your Chinese church is growing because it's illegal to be a Christian in, in China and you will be shut down. There are churches, legalized churches, but the sermon notes has to be processed by the local city mayor. They will tell you this you cannot preach, this you can preach. But the underground church grows faster and it is in a rapid growth. Two nations that's growing faster in the terms of Christianity is China and Iraq. I mean, Iran also. I mean, th this is crazy to think about it in a country where it's taboo to even think about Christianity, but it's growing. So I asked him and he said, one of the pillars, and he said, one of the pillars of the Chinese church is we embraced persecution. And I said, that doesn't sink into my postmodern prosperity teaching, isn't it? Because for me, it's like persecution means you got to pray against it. You got to pray against those things. You got you to gotta make sure that you live a blessed, happy life. The wealth, health, and the eternal happiness. That's what we are kind of taught, right? Come on. So I asked him, like, how do you embrace persecution? Do you find, no, no, he said, this is what he said. We don't embrace persecution for the sake of, for the sake of suffering. We endure persecution so that Christ may have its full reward. And I'm like, what do you mean Christ will have his full reward? And he said, Charles, you don't get it. In the most of the time in the West, we think persecution as a sign of a curse, as a sign something is going wrong. That's why you're persecuted. We've been taught. Suddenly your finances go dry. We immediately think something has gone wrong. You know, some, maybe your coffee machine is not working. You think persecution has started. You know, maybe your microwave stopped, you know, <laughs> bursting. You put a silver spoon accidentally, but you didn't see it, but it just gone. And you think, Lord, you know, persecution has started. But for them, persecution is not safe of suffering, but to see Christ gets his full reward. And what's Christ gets his full reward? It's the whole concept of Jesus saying, they hated me first and they're going to hate you. And, and for me, it took me a while to understand that, to say, well, I'm going to embrace persecution. It's not like I'm looking forward for persecution. I'm not just saying, you know, sending an email to BJP or local government, come and persecute me. I, I mean, <laughs> we don't want that. But, but to come to a point where, say, if the Son of God was rejected and persecuted, the followers of Jesus probably we should be at least prepared to embrace some kind of persecution. And they met persecution, if you read the book of Acts, with joy, with boldness, with gladness. That's the soil on the eight pillars were standing. Okay, if you take that soil and put something else, like the modern teaching, claim it, name it, you know those teachings we have, you, make, you claim this. You know, some guy will say, claim it, claim it, claim it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, I mean, it doesn't work. I mean, it, it's, it's sometimes we've, we find it in a very awkward place of claiming and naming. It doesn't work. I, I, I don't know whether I told you this a funny little story of a little guy going to his mom and asked bicycle. And the mom said, you got to pray. Keep praying. So he started praying. He don't know how to pray. He turned the television and says, not my will, your will be done. So he thought that should be the good prayer. So he went and home and he prayed, not my will, your will be done, not my will, your will be done. All week he prayed, nothing happened. He got frustrated, go to his mom again, says, I need a bike. Mom says, keep praying. So he thought something wrong with his prayer. He flipping his channel. He saw another pastor, he says, I claim this. So he thought maybe you should claim it. So he started claiming, I claim this bicycle, I claim this. One week, nothing happened. 
he got so agitated, goes back to his mom and says, Mama, give me my bicycle. Mama says, you got to keep praying. So he came up with his own idea. He saw on the kitchen counter, Mama kept a statue of Mary. He sneaked that statue from, his, from the counter. He went to his room, shut down, or closed all the windows, put the statue of Mary under the bed. He kneeled down and he said, Jesus, if you want to see your mother again. And sometimes we kind of do that, right? Sometimes we think, like, if this doesn't work, probably we should do that. If it doesn't work, we should do that. I, I personally think that's not biblical. Sometimes we got to endure pain. Sometimes we got to endure suffering. Sometimes we got to, I know it's not a very flashy message to talk about. Sometimes we have to endure persecution. Sometimes they will insult you. Sometimes they will make fun of you for your Christian stand. Sometimes they will reject you. Sometimes they will mock at you. Sometimes they will even ignore you. It's fine. The Son of God endured everything that what we are just talking about. Amen? So it's not something new. And joy, it's more than happiness. It's, a, it's an emotion of God that he deposits in our lives. Amen? So that's where we left and we asked ourselves these four questions. Where are we now as a church? What areas are we doing well? What areas we really need to cha challenge ourselves? How can we get there? What should we stop doing and what we need to start doing as our next step? Are we ready to be challenged? That's where we left. So my question is, are we ready to be challenged? <laughs> I'm asking you, are we ready to be challenged? Not yet. That's an honest answer. That's good. I'm going to share it with, I'm praying that God will give us the grace because I think if we can, that's why we take this four weeks to talk about it. This is just the second week. It's just the beginning. We probably will not highlight the whole thing, but I'm just going to a little bit touch base in that and see how the Lord leads. So this is the, the morning. This morning I want to talk about this. Vision part two. Jesus didn't raise Christians, he raised disciples. That's what I want to talk about. Okay? The challenge for us is this. Are we just Christians or are we disciples? The word disciple means student, follower. Okay? We tend to do this. I wrote down here, we are busy on Sunday for God and busy on other days for ourselves. And and I want to read this two quote that I found very interesting. It's by Duncan Campbell. I don't know whether you have heard about his name. And this guy shares this beautiful quote. And it's up there. It says, kingdom of God is not going to be advanced by our churches being come filled with men and women, but by men and women in our churches becoming filled with God. Do you agree with this? I mean... Are we satisfied when people come into church and say our chairs are full, overflow room is going on, we have two services, we are happy, we started a bilingual church, we started a Hindi service, we are fine, offerings is going up, we bought a piece of land, more staff we added, but the crime rate is still high, dowry is still high, caste is still, people still, caste based church is going on. I don't know whether you know that. Caste based. Still caste is a big thing in India. Still dowry is a big thing. In Christians, we don't call dowry. Whatever you give, give, I'll receive. Yes or no? I don't ask. But if they give, it's for their daughter only, no? Yes or no? It's there. It's there. But it's still there. It's still there. Greed is still there. Corruption is still there. $500 million was also allotted to the city of Velour to make it smart city. That's why you see all the ditches are going up. You know, they are bringing it, you know, they call it, um, uh, you know, they call in Tamil uh, underground ditches, Badala Sakade. But they have to excavate it. These guys don't excavate. They build a big wall on the existing ditch and make the houses go down, the ditches go up. Yes or no? You are saying it's your own city I'm talking about. Things are still challenging in our city. But are we asking the Lord, Lord, when things are going like this, 
I'm happy on Sunday. My church is filled. I'm having a good time. You know, once a month we're having some finger lunch. I bring my potluck. I try different food. I'm happy. I'm gone. That's, is, that, is that what Christianity is all about? I, I find it difficult to digest if that's what Christianity is. So, G.K. Chesterton, again, one of my favorite authors. He says, we do not want a newspaper say, a church that will move the world. We want a church that move the world. I'm, I, I'm praying that it needs a handful of people. Gideon took 20,000 or 10,000, I don't remember the number. He took 10,000 people before God and he said, God said, no, that's too much. And then he diluted to 300 handful of people and God brought deliverance. And that's what I pray, that God will take a few people who can say yes and see a mighty deliverance that happens. Now, I want to share a little bit about the vision the Lord gave me. And the first thing, I, sh I shared this two years ago, and uh, on, I think in December, around um, end of December, midnight, uh, 11.47 p.m., I remember I had a vision from the Lord. I saw this Velur map, and the Velur map, uh, the Velur district map, and I saw little, little fires uh, was just glowing here and there. And I said, Lord, what is this? These are the churches, the Lord said. These are churches. People go and worship me. They follow. And then suddenly I saw another screenshot. And I saw the entire district of Velur, the full thing was glowing. It's like, it's like a fire everywhere. And I said, Lord, what is this? But this time it's not like thick fire, but small, small candle fire. It's everywhere. And I said, Lord, what is this? And I heard the Lord said, this is how the church is going to be in the future. It's no more a building that people go to. It's every homes. People are going to have my presence. I'm, they're going to host my presence. And I was like, Lord, how is this going to be possible? And I heard very visibly the Lord said, what I want to do, I cannot do it because the existing structure is an hindrance. And I was, I, 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 it's almost like I, I said to my wife on, on the day, I felt so strong, I became sick. Sick in a sense, like I thought I'm going to be beaten by the Lord. You know, sometimes when you had this encounter with the Lord, you, you're going to be, you, this awesome fear of God comes upon you. You're going to be swallowed up alive, that kind of feeling. I got shook and I stood up and, and I said, Lord, what's going on? And every time I close my eyes, I see this fire in the city of Velur. Every time I close my eyes, it's every time, every single time. And I thought it will fade, you know, because you... Kind of, when you leave your country for a few months, you miss your country. Yes or no? We miss, no? So I thought maybe I'm missing India. That's why I'm having this, you know, because I carry, I tell Linu, always make me some beef pickles because I go Spain and, in, uh, you know, different American, different countries. Their food is blunt. Our palate is used to that. So they will give me pasta, whatever. I will put my beef pickle next to that. You know? <laughs> yes. You can take Indian out of India. But you can never take a India out of the Indian. It's in the gospel of India, chapter 2, verse 1. <laughs> anyway, but get, I'm coming to the point, okay? So I thought maybe this will disappear. Maybe now for a few months, you know, I'm working on, we took a sabbatical. So I thought maybe this will go. After a few while, it just keep on increasing. I started writing down. I started asking the Lord, what is this? And this is what... The first requirement of any disciple is, is to follow Jesus. So, I'm going to show this video. Meanwhile, I'll talk, so we'll save time. So, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, you can keep like this. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go make disciples. If you have a paper Bible, please circle that word, make disciples disciples. He didn't say, make Christians. He didn't say, go and convert them. Give them a new name. Tell them to be part of a church. You know, we, do, we don't do that. You know, make disciples of all nations. He didn't say, just stay with your comfort zone. Just stay with your, your area of influences. He said, to all nations. And then he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then he didn't say that alone. He said, teach them that these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Can you imagine this conversation? 
Jesus is about to go. Okay, this is going to work. Don't worry. You know, Jesus is about to go take a nap. He gives two commands. One is recorded here in Matthew 28. Another one is recorded in Acts chapter 1 verse 5. What is another one? It says, don't go, wait until the Holy Spirit comes. So, look at this. God says, I'm going up. I want you to wait. I'm sending my comforter. His name is Holy Spirit, Parakletos. He's going to empower you so that you can be my witness. Witness means you will be my kingdom representative in the world. Yes? And then he says, I want you to go and baptize them. He just didn't say baptize them. He told them, after baptizing, you teach them. After teaching, make sure they obey. Now, look at our current structure. I want you to think about it objectively. Our current structure, you know how it works right now? Our current structure is, you come to church, you be part of a group, you repeat this four-line pray, four prayer called the, the repentance prayer. Okay? Now you're part of the church, you're born again. You come to church, <laughs> it's all because of the brie cheese, man. <laughs> I tell you. You come to church, you're part of the church, you're part of an organization, you, you, you repeated the prayer, now you are okay, now everything is fine. Now you are considered a Christian. You can continue to do whatever you want to do Monday to Saturday. I've said this before, people are born again on Monday, dead again on Sunday. Sorry, born again on Sunday, dead again on Monday. This has happened. We have seen this. And you live and work in a Christian organization. And tell me, in Christian organization where you work, can you tell honestly, is there Christ exalted in that place? One honest answer, the rest of you like, if I say no, probably, you know, I'm in trouble. But let me tell you this, I don't want to point anyone. Look at us. How are we living from Monday to Saturday? I mean, are we excited that we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that we go out and share the gospel. We live with that eternal kingdom perspective. We don't. For us, reading Bible is a boring thing to do. Prayer is boring. Evangelism is boring. Discipleship, fasting, it's, it's something that we have to do. Why? It's part of a religious box. God is challenging that. He's saying, I want you to come into a place where you will encounter me and you will follow me and you will represent me and you will teach my life to others not through words but through your life amen i don't know whether you watch chosen anybody watch chosen this is a clip i want to show you from chosen it's working hope the sound works now yes we live in the same world matthew next besides what else are you going to do with a mind like yours Matthew. Matthew, son of Alphaeus. Yes. Follow me. Me? <laughs> yes, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. What are you doing? You want me to join you? Keep moving, street preacher. Do you have any idea what this guy has done? Do you even know him? Yes. Listen, I said to... What are you doing? Where do you think you're going? Guys? Let me go. Have you lost your mind? You have money. Quintus protects you. No Jew lives as good as you. You're going to throw it all away. Yes. I don't get it. 
You didn't get it when I chose you either. But this is different. I'm not a tax collector. Get used to different. I'm glad we passed by your booth today, Matthew. Yes. Shall we? We have a celebration to prepare for. You will regret this, Matthew. What's the tablet for? I grabbed it without thinking. You can put it back. No, no, keep it. You may yet find use for it. Where are we going? A dinner party. I'm not welcome at dinner parties. Well, that's not going to be a problem tonight. You're the host. Powerful video clip. If you have not watched Chosen, please go and watch. It's incredible how God calls. And by the way, this guy, Matthew, is an Indian guy. You know, and uh, he acts on this role. And when Jesus called everyone, he called not into your religion. He did not call them into your program. He did not call them into your policy. He did not call them into some kind of outward works. He called them into following him, getting his life from him and sharing his life to others. And that's what I want to talk about discipleship is what I want to talk about the second part of the church vision the first one he didn't call us to he didn't tell us to go to church but he told us what is the church and he, we talked about last week the eight pillars and this morning we'll talk about what is discipleship and some more scriptures I'll read Acts chapter 11 verse 26 it says when he found Saul he brought him to Antioch, where the whole year in Parnabas met with church and taught many people. Circle that word, taught. Many people there. In Antioch, the followers, which means disciples, were called Christians for the first time, highlighting that they were followers of Christ. Perhaps they were no longer viewed as merely sect within Judaism. Look at verse 11th chapter of verse 26. It was there in Antioch where the term Christian was first used to identify the disciples of Jesus. See, this is the problem. It's not up in the screen. With the church is that we are more aware of raising Christians and not more aware of raising disciples. We want name change. We want to see church seated. Capacity is filled so that we can say, well, we are growing. See, Thomas came 2,000 years ago to India. Still less than 6% are Christians. Why? Can you, can you imagine? A curry, country like Korea, South Korea, after the Second World War, Americans, missionaries, they sent, and it was a country that was absolutely of no value. Their currency was good for nothing. Their Korean currency was cheaper and worse than Indian currency. But they embraced the gospel. Today, 45% of Koreans are Bible-believing Christians. I've been to Korea a few times, and that's why I'm sharing this. The lifestyle of Koreans, and one of the foundation of the church growth in Korea is this, prayer and fasting. And it's grown exponentially. And if you look at history everywhere where the church have grown, where the church have multiplied, they understood it's not just a program going to cut it. You know, we have so many programs you know, we have programs to overcome porn. We have programs to overcome addiction. But we don't come to a point and we say, I want to sit at the feet of Jesus. Let him minister to me. It takes time. It's not fancy. We want everything in a pill, capsule, cut, pre-cut, one size fits all. And the other day I was talking uh, to someone in the church and they asked me, Pastor, uh, why in the church we talk so much about uh, prostitution, you know, and homosexuals, but never address the issue of gluttony? And I, I jokingly said, I think because most pastors are gundu pastors. <laughs> it's true, right? Because you only judge somebody who sins differently than you. That's a reality. It was it Sharon, no? You texted. Yeah. And, and I said, how do you overcome gluttony? And I, I was a gundu pastor. And one day the Holy Spirit said, if you keep going gundu like this, you're going to come home sooner than I thought. And, and my original design is not going to fulfill in your life. Because, and this is what he said. If you can't control 
the temporary pleasures of this little thing called appetite, food appetite. How can you live? How can I trust you with eternal stuff? And I tell you, it was a turnaround in my life. I could see literally the Lord. The more I control, tend to control over the little pleasures. You know, Sunday is my sweet day. And I'm looking forward to those days. The rest of the days people offer me. And the other day I went to pray for one child. And they gave me Mysore Park. And I'm like, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's so tempting. You know, that to give Mysore Park, Pastor. I'm like, oh, Lord. Get behind me, Satan. Satan is inside my surpak, you know. <laughs> but you, sometimes it's tough. But why do this? Because I believe disciples means it's not just a program you, you're plugged in. And I wrote down three things about discipleship. Before that, I want to share this thought. What is to be a Christian in a religious setting and what is to be a disciple in a kingdom setting? It's not up there. Religion focuses on converting people into their ideologies. That's what religion focuses on. You accept, you want to be part of our denomination. In our denominations, women sit on the left side, men sit on the right. If men sits on the left side, maybe that men is really not a man. We need to cast the woman out of the men. I grew up like this. There is a fiery red carpet in the middle. It's like you cross that fire, you will be consumed. The Lord is a consuming fire. Red carpet, this side, this side. There is a clear wall, you know. Sheep and goats are separated in the last days. But here, men and women are separated. So you're formed into some ideologies. Kingdom, focus on relationship. Are you following the one? Religion teaches you how to judge. We know how to judge, right? Yes. If somebody comes here with a clothing that you don't agree, what do you say? Huh, I know this person oh look at her hair too short is she what she thinks woman too short hair short hair does not define womanhood yes or no I'm talking to you guys tell me yes we are we know we, we taught people how to judge the longer the hair is Tamil ponna neetta mudi vechirukano yes or no Gideon We, we've been taught like that. Suddenly somebody comes with a pop cutting. Hmm, fashion. We've been taught how to judge. But we never judge somebody who's sinning like us. Gluttony, for example. Anyone talked about gluttony? Anyone said, hey man, you're, you know, we talked about don't watch that movie. We don't talk about don't take the extra plate of rice. Don't go for seconds. Anybody share? Don't watch that movie, we say. Don't go for seconds. Don't go for unlimited meals. Some people look like they can eat two unlimited meals. But they can perfectly fit in the church. Fine. But the guy who comes and says, I have a problem with that. Oh, he's the worst sinner. I'm not saying that is okay. I'm saying sin is sin in the eyes of the Lord. Guys, let's get it straight, you know. That's my point. Reli religion. No. Religion teaches you how to fix God, others, and eventually you. Religion teaches you something doesn't work fast. Something doesn't work, give more. You know, I heard, I remember watching God TV. There's one guy, I would not mention the name. This guy says, You want a financial breakthrough? Sow into our ministry. Next month you will see. Stupid me, I have sown into. Next month, even I got broke more. You know why? We thought, anybody address, agree with me? Anybody fall into the trap? You know why? We fall into the trap. Why? There is inside of this word called self-life. The self-life says, you need more. You need more. So they are appealing to your self-life in the covering of Bible. Anywhere, can you read Bible it says? God says, so into my ministry, you will receive a double fold. Anywhere, Jesus' disciples go and said, I will pray for you, you pay me subscription. And there is a combo offer. What is the combo offer? We will pray for your third cousin also. <laughs> I'm adding some humor to it, but you know the reality. This has become capitalized. So religion teaches you how to judge. Relationship teaches you how to love. Religion teaches you how to fix God, others, and eventually you. Relationship teaches you that when you abide in Him, He will enable you. 
my prayer for you is this we sang this song i think it was somebody read here royal priesthood what was the verse first timothy first tim first peter 2 9 that's my prayer that you will be a royal priesthood probably god willing next week we'll talk about that because this will spill over that why we change some of the structure because god's goal for you is not to attend church god's goal for you is to embrace the original design which is what royal priesthood what is a royal priesthood you are king's kid but you also a priest your life becoming a sacrifice aroma to the lord and you can't do that in one and a half hours on sunday and if you have call you can't do that you have to postpone for two more weeks because pastor i'm on call so royal priesthood thing is not an event it's a lifestyle now we are busy on sunday for god uh, busy on other days for ourselves one of the sad thing about religion is that it only judges someone who sins differently than yourself for example self pity gluttony and unforgiveness are some major sins that are overwhelmingly accepted in their community but on the other hand a guy or a girl has an issue with porn or drinking problem or gambles he or she is ostracized yes or no i'm not saying these two things are bad three things could be ignored i'm not saying the other thing has to be ignored i'm just saying let's face it sin is sin in the eyes of the lord i know one pastor he's no more with the lord he's sorry he's no more here he's with the lord you know <laughs> i don't know what's happening today for me you got to pray for me you know because of two empty seats i guess but anyway but this is the thing he's with the lord one day i went and visited him okay <laughs> his sugar level was 500 i asked him oh, his name is pastor gideon I said gideon ayya he's a senior man i said ayya you have to take care of your health yeah. he, he eats like a tower of pyramid you have you seen rice like a pyramid you know so i told him please please don't eat white rice eat some chapati sugar level is going up the please reduce eat some more vegetables he said 500 what 500 even if it is thousand jesus is coming soon literally i'm not joking and then one month later one finger gone two fingers gone one feet toe finger gone one feet gone two feet amputated finally he died gone it's a sad thing his son was only 24 years old he is following the footsteps of his dad i told him thambi please do not do this you know why many for many christians this is the thing i i have done this and that's why i have done for many christians we have been taught the list of don't do is more and the lift of do's are very less yes or no in the christian circle you can't watch circus if you are from ipc cpm background going to circus is hmm, they will make a circus out of your life yes you can't watch circus you can't watch movie you can't do this the list of don't do's are so long what do you do the only thing is sitting in front of you is what hyderabad dum biryani take seconds take thirds take fourth you know they pastors most south indian pastors don't need a pulpit they carry a mobile pulpit with them i used to carry a mobile pulpit perfectly gideon's translation will sit on that it's true i would i mean it's like it doesn't fall no shaking firmly rooted <laughs> but my brothers and sisters one day the holy spirit convicted me that's gluttony that's gluttony why because i have found comfort only in i should have found comfort only in the lord but i have found comfort in the things that is temporary we don't talk about it why because it's food it's not a big deal but we find some people find comfort in drinking some people find comfort in gambling some people find comfort in other things are we understanding this is it is it too much or no? okay now three things i wrote down here it's going to go quickly discipleship requires discipline what are the requirements to be a disciple please take notes if you're not taking notes take notes it starts with us then it carried on to others who are seeking to build his kingdom it requires discipline it's so important if you want to be a disciple of jesus you have to have discipline and that is something not externally anybody can put on it it nobody can put that on you it has to start from within you proverbs 22 6 says direct your children into the right paths when they are older they will not live 
So we used to give pocket money. They can go and buy some chips or whatever. I made a decision with Eunice, you know, and I said we are not going to give pocket money or any little thing unless they become readers. So we give them. We bought the books. We said you want to read. Because I know one guy, his father told him, you pick up trash, I'm not going to give you money. You clean your room, I'm not going to give you money. If you read books, I'll give you money. You know that guy's name? John Maxwell. Amen? So I told them, Asha and Isaac, daddy will never reward you. If I finish the food on time, I'm not going to reward you. If you clean your room, that's your chore. You're under my roof, you want to do that. That's, that's your responsibility. But if you read a book, I'm going to reward you. And they are good in that. So, look at this. Proverbs 12, 1. Whoever loves discipline, loves knowledge. And who hates reproof is stupid. Three benefits of discipline. It's not up there. Discipline makes you wiser. Discipline changes us. Discipline puts us above the situation. Number two. Discipleship means accountability. Matthew 25, 15 says, He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Someone said accountability means account, give account according to your ability. So, are we accountable as Christians, as church? Are we accountable to one another? What is, what is accountability means? You open up and you say, I'm struggling in this area. I need a divine intervention. I can't do it on my own. So please help me. I know most of you in this gathering are accountable. And which I'm very grateful for. I'm seeing Christ formed in you, which I'm very happy to see that. But majority of the church, it's almost like a stretch and go on Sunday thing. We are not accountable. We don't share. We are not vulnerable because we are taught being vulnerable means they will know your weak point and they will use it later when you, when you kind of drift. It happened. So that's why the leadership abuse that has happened, people become very guarded. Yes or no? They don't share. Everything is fine. Happy. Inside you are crumbling. Fine. Fine. We are taught to keep up strong. But that shouldn't be the case. The Bible says Max, Acts is full of people who are accountable to one another. Now, James 5, 16 in the ESV translation says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that they may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has the power and it's working. Third one, discipleship involves commitment. So, discipleship requires discipline. Discipleship means accountability. Discipleship involves commitment. We, Sunday Christians can't be committed. It's convenience based. I remember being in Dallas. Suddenly the snow came. It hardly snows in Dallas. And the friend, pastor friend who was hosting me said, today people won't come to church. I said, what do you mean they won't come to church? Charles, welcome to American church. We come only if it is comfortable. It has to be comfortable. They don't take the risk. I said to me, Josh, our people walk two, three kilometers on hot sun. They sit under a non-care conditioned room and they worship. I said, Charles, here, no. Here it has to be comfortable. It has to be convenience. And look where we are going as a church, my brothers and sisters. We are going as a church in India. It has to be convenience. Your service timing has to be convenient. It has to be precise. We say to them, Holy Spirit, you can do your work as long as it's one and a half hours. Yes or no? We give Holy Spirit a happy hour. You know what is an happy hour? Oh, some of the saints don't know what you're talking about. The non-saints, you know what is an happy hour? Yes, lift up your hands. Emmanuel, thank you. Yes, we give Holy Spirit an happy hour. What is that? In one and a half hours, you do your kumbaya thing and fill me up. For the rest of six days and seven nights. That's a Harrison Ford movie, you know. The six days and seven nights. I'm going to be happy for the rest of the day. As long as you do this one and a half hours. Happy hour thing. You're not, we are not committed. We, that's the thing. Galatians 6, 9 says, Let us not get tired of doing what is good. And just in the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. This is what I wrote on. Please write it down. It's not up in the screen. God doesn't reward your calling. 
God rewards your faithfulness to your calling. Yes or no? Does he reward you for your calling? I don't get, I don't get rewarded. But he rewards for the faithfulness. Are you faithful in being accountable? Are you faithful in being committed? John 3.16, famous verse says, For God so loved the world, he gave his son. Imagine if Jesus is not committed. Can you think? An uncommitted Jesus coming to the world. He comes. Herod threatens. He's like, hmm. Ciao. I'm going up there to be with the fat angels. They're going to sing Kumbaya to me. Imagine this. Our Savior, if he is not committed, do we get salvation? I mean, do we, I mean come on. I mean, even that, that very point of his death, somebody is saying, can you tell me your, my name? Can you tell my father's name? You think God cannot tell, tell his name? He could have traced it all the way back to Adam. That guy's pants would have been soiled if Jesus would have said all the way back. Yes, but he didn't do it. Why? He was committed. The Bible says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. My prayer is that we would, we would come to that point of commitment. We would say, Lord, I want to be committed like the son of God. Okay, now, going back to the vision, this is what I wrote down here. These three things. You can keep going. Discipleship and Okay. This is what I felt. These three things. There's church in every house. Every house can be a church. Every home has a potential to be a church. There's a church in every house. Now, think about this. There's a little slide will keep on going, and I will click this. Velour population is what? 700,000 people. Okay? Plus, minus. You have an influx of immigrants, migrants, and, you know, unaccounted. People are just moving around. So they say estimated is close to a million, but let's be conservative. 700,000. I am praying that God will give Papa's house an inheritance of 10%. Which is what? 70,000. It's a very easy math. Okay? You have to take one zero off. Okay. So, now, 70,000. 70,000 people. To put 70,000 people on a Sunday in a church, how big you should have the building? The, the Madras Chinnasamy Stadium, Cricket Stadium, how big is it? Huh? 40,000. 40,000. So, you need at least almost twice the size of that. Okay? These are the following slide you will see. Right now, the church is on Sunday. I have a very poor drawing, so excuse me. This is Velur map. You will see Katpadi all the way. We are Munjurpet down there, you know, like, we are like, you know the train, the first class and the unreserved compartment? We are the unreserved compartment on the very last. <laughs> That's where you are, at the end of somewhere forsaken place. Singapore was like that. It was a it was a backwaters of Malaysia. And President Lee said, give me this country for 40 years. Do what I say. It will become top eight countries in the world. Today, Singaporean passport is one of the most valued passport in the world. And I believe God can take the least of the least and turn something into if we are hearing his voice. You know, that's my prayer. Now, this is what the Lord kind of put in my heart. I could not even put next slide. You can keep going. You know, my vision for the churches on Sunday, it's packed. It's like a fire everywhere, growing everywhere. It's all over. It's not just on Sunday. It grows everywhere. Now, next slide, if you look at, we go to church building, gathered in one place. But the vision the Lord gave, we are the church scattered throughout the city. Okay? One of the complaints I hear, honestly, people say, Pastor, if you move into the city, it will be convenient for us. I've heard that. Why don't you move into the city? I said, I, I don't know. I don't feel that. I don't want to commercialize it. If I move into the city, I'm forced to talk 20 minutes on offering or make you even feel good about it. So if you give, you'll be blessed. You know, I, I don't want that because the church shouldn't be a business oriented. I'll explain why. The second one, we get entertained spiritually. I come there. The worship was fantastic. Oh, the voice of the main lead singer was good. It was so powerful. I got goosebumps. But then Tuesday you go. You listen. 
to Pushpa song. You know the movie Pushpa? And you get goosebumps also because he's moving his shoes like this. He's moving his shoes. You get the same goosebumps. One is in the church and other one is in front of the TV. What more? So is the goal of God to create goosebumps for you? That's why the Son of God came? I mean, for me, it doesn't sink well. Look at this. To get entertained. But the church, in the church, we are the church scattered through the city, keep going. Yes, entertained spiritually to get equipped. We are called to be equipped. That means you and me are supposed to be equipped in the fullness of Christ. You read Paul's letter everywhere. There's a silver line. Colossians 1.3, Colossians 3.13, Ephesians 2.6. You see it everywhere. He says one thing. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ seated in heavenly is in Christ. You are hidden in Christ. Christ, Christ, Christ. You are not visible. Christ. Keep going. Okay? Look at the next one. One or two gifts are exercised. Let me be honest with you. Today, how many gifts are exercised? We heard the worship team beautifully. Some of the gifts. And you are listening to my ranting for 40 minutes. Yes? The rest of the gifts are dormant. I don't know what's the gift of Molose. I have no clue. Why? Because the structure is not helping to figure out what is the gift. I don't know what is the gift of Sam other than the muscles he shows. You know, pastor, hello. How are you, pastor? I'm like, hmm. Hmm? I don't know the rest of the gifts. The rest of the gifts are dormant. Why? Because the structure is not allowing. Because we want God to do his thing in one and a half hours. Now it's not one and a half hours anymore. He tells one and a half hours, always two hours. Hmm? Keep going. Where the fivefold gifts are exercised. What is the fivefold goal? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. All equipped. Read Ephesians 4. All the five equip the body of Christ. These five equip the body of Christ to receive the fullness of Christ. Is it happening? It's not happening. Structure is the problem. Number, keep going, keep going. High over at cost. Imagine if I would have raised the funds to build this. It cost 80, to 80 lakhs to 1 crore to build this. Imagine investing 1 crore for 2 hours every Sunday. Is it a kingdom wise investment? Can you think about this? Let's be honest. Look at this. Low over at cost. Keep going. More investments on buildings and less on mission. Why? If you know, that's why they take a big loan. They say, we have 200 people in the church. This is our projected income. Let's go to the bank, get two crores. Build a big church, cushion. Well, you'll get visions from above, you know. And you have cushion, air condition, soundproof. You feel good. Michael Jackson smoke mission. Everything is fine. Oh, wow. Yes, presence, presence, presence. Sunday is gone. Monday, some other presence. So over at cost. Mission, we send 5%. 3% of church income is only spent on missions. You know, we get 40 to 50,000 offering every month. You know, we give 10% of the missions, it goes. More than the average Christian church that spends on missions. And then we spend 20% or 25% on homeless. So you go on missions, somewhere it sends... North India, it goes somewhere, you know, somewhere we, we, we invest and we go there. The rest is goes there. Why? I don't have over at cost. This is not built for that. This is for a school. And me and Eunice, for the last 24 years, we are on missions. We never took salary. So we're going to live in faith. We are not going to take salary. None of our staff get salary. They get us a little pocket expenses. That's it. Why? Because we want to see the money invested in the missions. If I build a house, if I build a church, one crore, and I have a monthly payment of 30,000, how much I'm going to give missions? EMI, 30,000. I cannot give to missions. Homeless? Andor Varapura, Enna homeless. Jesus is coming soon. Why homeless? But we feed every time. Chicken biryani, not just, you know, good, good piece. Why? Because you less over at cost, more. Do you hear the point? You see where it's going? Okay, keep going. It gets better. Entertain saints, performance. Equip the saints, mature to be more like Christ in their life. Entertains. Can I honestly ask you this question? Can you be honest with me? If Sharon, Benny, Emmanuel, you know, Gideon, 
and my son lenu if they stopped singing or playing and they just give vocal songs can you sing along with them because we we feel like oh something is missing why because when i am talking some pastors they need see kudupa see see huh? see when see only when you press see only holy spirit is coming is is holy spirit is confined to see we, we, because it's emotionalism guys who is going to give you see on sunday monday morning in your bedroom if they come and say i'm going to come to give see to you can you imagine this that's what happened now equip the saints mature to be more like christ mono or bilingual service what is happening right now we are reduced mono language what is that english maxim bilingual you sing on hindi song or malayalam song feel good that's it but revelation 7 9 says i saw a multitude the no man could count from every tribe every language every people group standing before the throne worshiping the lord this city is a multicultural city guys but we don't see the representative of that why because we are skewing them into this faint funnel it's not working keep going program and policies are top priority people are not prioritized program we have a program you fit into this the church that god intended that he said i will build my church you remember that five words we remember last week i will build my church it's people oriented keep going 70000 seating capacity is a football or a cricket stadium that only used on sundays all we need is what 6500 to 7000 homes and they use every day you don't go and say can i rent your home amen my prayer after this four weeks of vision impartation i'm praying for 10 homes who say pastor i want to see the fire ignited in my home i'll tell you how in the coming weeks amen that doesn't mean we will not stop to gather we will gather but we will gather not necessarily in the periodic manner how we are gathering we may gather once in two weeks or however but our focus is going to be more the kingdom of god in the churches in the houses i have heard so many people said i can't come to your church but if you have some prayer meeting in your house i will come why because church as a taboo most of the south indian churches are situated in a very socially explicable uh, explained neighborhood it's for that particular caste other caste cannot go in so people have a hard time going inside a church but they have no problem in coming into your home having a cup of coffee and you share the kingdom with them it takes commitment huh? let's keep going revolves around a person man is in the center revolves around christ christ jesus in the center focuses on the church right now you know when we moved to states for few weeks few months because of our personal challenges people stopped coming they said pastor you are not there i don't want to see you they texted me openly we don't want to see you on the screen we moved somewhere they moved they just moved some people didn't tell they just moved we came to others you know why because it's focused on one man i believe the church that christ intended should not be focused on a man that's why when a senior pastor dies the church splits in 10 different you know it's true it's it's five different denomination goes why because it's focused on a man it shouldn't be like that it sh- the ch- if the church stops the papa sir stops after our period of our life here on earth i think we made a terrible mistake as pastors but if it continues and a wild fire goes because that's the word the lord gave me he said one million churches i'm going to give you and you will not be the pastor and the church will be a royal priesthood before me shining its light amen look at this keep going convenience commitment free any time you can come the doors will be all place open for you covenant relationship based and last but not the least the most important thing i put it there and the very last so that you will stick in your mind no general vision or purpose why you go to church sunday we go to church 
I'm a Christian. You are Hindu, you go on Fridays. You are Muslim, you go on Saturday. I, SD, you go on Saturday. I'm a Christian, go on Sunday. Commitment free. But the church that Christ intended, purpose oriented. What is that? Come on, read it up, please. Making disciples. What does that mean? Followers of Jesus. I stopped saying, people ask me, are you a Christian? I say, no. Then who are you? Are you atheist? No, I'm not a fool to be an atheist. Then who are you? I just follow a Jewish carpenter who happened to live 2,000 years ago. His name is Yeshu Masih. Oh, you're a Christian. I said, that's the name you gave me. I'm called a follower of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, I can keep going, but I want to stop here. Do you see where Christ is intending the church to become? Do you see where we are at? My prayer is, we need to honestly ask the Lord, Lord, if the structure is an hindrance to what you are doing, I want to let go of the structure. My prayer is this, that you will go home and you will ask the Lord, Lord, is the structure helping me? Is the structure helping me to become a disciple? Is the structure helping me to make disciples of the people around me? Is people attracted to me because of the fragrance of Jesus emulating from me? Or I'm just a religious nut. They say, he's a Christian. Look at his car. Sticker is there. Look at his house. Big verse is there. You know, some Christians are even more holier than Jesus. They take a scripture from the Bible, put it on the top of the Bible. And we find it so happy about that. But my brothers and sisters, that's not the goal of the church. The goal of the church is to see Christ formed in us. Amen. I want you to stand up. I know it's 11.22. I need to stop here. Maybe if, is there something else? Yes. This is where current situation, the church is. We go on Sundays. It's spread out. Some people go in the fort. Some people go to CMC, church, chapel. Some people go to Peniel. Some people go to AFT. Some people come here. Some, it's just scattered around. Monday, the church building is closed. Pastor's day off. You call him 9 o'clock. He's still sleeping. But what happens to the believers? Are they just surviving? Are they selling? Are they allowing Christ to form in their lives? I know it's tough to talk about it. I know it's change is hard. Miles Monroe says, I don't know anybody heard about Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe used to say, one of the most difficult thing for any human to do is change. And one of the most inevitable thing for any human is change. Because it's inevitable. Change always happens. But it's one of the difficult things to do. And I feel like we are in a crossroads. We are about to see a new wave of revival. You know, for the last 10 years, we've been praying for water to come on the river. And God, one day, he said, prepare a boat. And I'm praying and I'm saying little by little money to buy a boat. In Kerala, I already found one place. One boat. One day, the first person who's going to ride a boat here in Palara. I know you look like, hmm, you're nuts. But 20 years, there was no water. Water is coming. Things are about to change. What you see in the flesh is actually what God is doing in the spirit. Things are about, there is a shifting. People are not satisfied with church by itself. Are you satisfied? Are you just satisfied in your Christian life? I'm happy, pastor. Everything is fine. No, there is something. People are tired of just giving to an organization that they are not in accountable to. Yes or no? Come on, church, talk to me. Yes, People want to know where my money goes. People want to know what are you doing, your personal life. People don't want a good sermon on Sunday. People want to know how well you treat your family the rest of the days. Are you real or are you fake? Yes or no? We are in that place on a crossroads. If we allow the Holy Spirit, that's why I use the word if. If we allow the Holy Spirit, it's a condition. If we allow the Holy Spirit to yield ourselves to his work, I believe there is a great revival coming. India will reap a great harvest. India will reap a great harvest. Amen. One day, I believe this, and I've said this two years ago, one day, gathering like this will be illegal. You're saying, Pastor, you're just prophesying negative. 
to make up your point. No, I feel that the persecution ahead of us is coming. Don't pray for Congress to come. I don't think in near sight you will see them coming. The Lord in strategically, because of his mercy, is allowing some things to happen so that the people who are sleeping in the church to wake up and say, I want to see kingdom of God comes. One day this is going to be illegal. What are you going to do? Zoom? And Zoom has never edified the body of Christ. How many of you say, Zoom made me come closer to Jesus? No, you are still in your lungi, you are scratching your armpit because your camera is not on, you are still watching, you are still having your old pizza, still in your couch, sitting there, ah, Lord Jesus. No, it's not. Come on. Let's be clear. Zoom is not the new wave of Christian development in your life. I believe what is happening in China, what is happening in Iran and Iraq, very soon we are going to experience here. And that time, Instead of panicking, if you are prepared, you're going to see kingdom of God rapidly growing in a very amazing way so that this India will one day bow its knee before the king of glory. Amen. Here are some announcements. If you have missed any of our sermons, you can watch them by logging in on Papa's house through YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes and Facebook. We have a family support program where we support single mothers and their children by getting provisions through finances and opportunities to earn a livelihood through small businesses. Every Friday through our homeless feeding program, our team prepares and distributes food packets for homeless people in and around Velour. We would encourage you to join us in this program by either preparing or distributing food packets and also by considering making your generous contributions through your finances. If you consider yourself to be a part of Papa's house, then we would encourage you to send your tithes and offerings. But if you are visiting Papa's house for a few occasions and led by the Spirit and you feel that Papa's house has made a difference in your spiritual life and your connection with Christ, you could consider sowing a small seed through an offering. We would make sure it falls on the good soil so that it reaps a good reward from God. You can find the details of the bank accounts and Google Pay should you decide to send in your offering to us. We will intimate to you once we have received it. Also, here are the links on how you can reach and follow us.